My name is Janice Wang. I work on multi-sensory cross-modal correspondences between sound and taste, uh, and I'm doing my PhD at Oxford University. In order to design more interesting dining experiences, I decided I should look into the science behind, you know, how is it that sound can influence what we eat? Even though sometimes I'm trying to make art, like when I, when I try to design a dinner, then you kind of think about what is the science behind it? How do we build up the art from the science? I usually do experiments with, I think chocolate is very common because it has both sweet and bitter components. So then you can study, you know, if you play the sweet music versus the bitter music, um, how that might influence your perception of chocolate. I also do a lot of studies with wine because wine is such a, a complex sensory stimuli, so a lot of different flavors and different aromas. So then I usually will play people different music while they're drinking the wine and then ask them to rate the wine. Also, we just did a study with beer in Brussels. So we had an independent brewer who donated essentially hundreds of bottles of beer. And we did this study in the uh, Music Instrument Museum in Brussels. So we had different people you know, drink the same beer twice, but they were in different cups and we didn't tell them it was the same beer. And they listened to different music while drinking each of the beers, and then they had to rate you know, how sweet, how bitter, how sour was the beer, etc. Um, so then again, like this within subject design, we would compare their results for beer one and beer two. And because they were the same beer, we could just compare the effect of music. But what we believe is happening is that it doesn't really you know, change the taste of the food. What the music does is that it shifts your attention to different elements of the food. So, for example, if you're eating chocolate, playing the sweet music might shift your attention to, to pay attention to the sweet parts of the chocolate, um, whereas the bitter music might shift your attention to the bitter parts of the music. So the soundtracks are usually made based on some sort of study that we do beforehand. So for example, we can do a study where we ask people, okay, imagine you're eating something sweet. Find the notes on the piano that to you is sweet, or that to you is bitter, or it's salty. And then we look at, you know, averaged over a lot of people, what is the average notes that people pick for sweet or, or for bitter? And then you can see that, okay, so on average people pick a low note for bitter and a high note for sweet. So then when we make the soundtracks, you know, you would make the sweet one in a higher pitch range than the one for bitter. So back in the US, before I started my PhD, I, I did some museum installations and this kind of like multi-sensory pop-up dinners. And now in London, what I'm doing is that I have a group of people that I work with and we call ourselves the, the cross modalists And we're trying to start the whole art movement, in fact, of, of how to create these multi-sensory art experiences. So we do this kind of concerts that includes music, it includes wine, it includes food. Um, but we also collaborate with people to do like virtual reality movies, for example. Um, so you can be wearing headsets, but you can also have someone touch you while you're watching the movie or you, you smell different things during the movie. We're trying to, to grow this circle of you know, like artists and designers and scientists who are trying to work on the same thing. We do quite a bit of installations and then private performances. I mean, I would like to continue to make art and, and kind of design interesting installations and experiences. But I also really like wine. So I would love to, to work with you know, wineries or, or wine bars or even branding companies. And you know, how can you change someone's experience of, of wine with music and with sound?